Joshua Walker here of Japan Society. I am particularly excited to welcome our current guest to Tea Time. Ambassador Kanji Yamanouchi is a Consul General of Japan here in New York and a good friend to both me and to Japan Society. Yamanouchi-san, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me here today. I'm so excited too. Yamanouchi-san, this has been crazy for all of us, but to be the representative of Japan and to be quarantined over these last two months, how are you doing uh, with the current uh, quarantine environment? How are you doing your job in the middle of all this? That's a very good question. Actually, this is my first experience in staying in New York in this particular situation. And I think of my mission here. I'm ambassador, I'm a diplomat sent by the government. So I need to fulfill my mission. Then I think of it. Then staying health, healthy is been very, very important because the function of consulate have to be maintained to support the Japanese community here in New York and other areas. So I have to stay healthy. Therefore, I follow the instruction by our medical doctor very seriously. So basically, I stay home. I do teleworking, except very special occasion. And not just myself, but also all the members of the consulate. They are working so hard, they devote themselves. But uh, I always remind them of the job one, for us now particularly is to stay healthy. Health is most important. Otherwise, our function cannot be sustained. No, it seems clear that we never even considered health in the same way before this crisis. Now, the juxtaposition between public health and our economy is playing out in all areas, whether it's here in New mm -hmm. York, at the city level, the state level, or the US. Um, Japan has gone through this before, maybe not in the same way, but this pandemic hit Japan first. So uh, how do you think about kind of the lessons that Japan offers to us here in New York and beyond? I think of this way, each nation is taking their best to combat against the COVID-19. And each nation has its own characteristics and also different historical background, culture, the economic conditions, social conditions. So each country is tackling in their own way. And just like Japan, so I could offer certain elements that Japan has experienced, but also we can learn a lot from lessons of other countries. But uh, according to, uh, as far as Japan is concerned, I would like to mention four elements. The first one is a cluster-based approach. As you just mentioned, the first wave hit Japan. And based upon the recent latest analysis by National Institute, of infectious disease. This uh, cluster-based approach functioned well to contain the first wave from China. The second point I would like to mention is three Cs. That are in Japan, now it's very famous word, mitsu no mitsu. That is misetsu, mippe, mishu, misetsu. In English, we translate it in three Cs. The first C is uh, closed spaces with poor, poor ventilation. Second C is crowded places with many people nearby. And third C is close contact, just like close range conversations. When we avoid these three C situations, we will be able to reduce the number of infections. And actually it, it worked. This, this each bar represents the new, new confirmed cases per day. In middle of April, we had more than 600, close to 700 and 500 uh, new cases each day. But as of yesterday, it was less, less than 100. And some people say that that is because of the small number of the PCR testing. Then, then if I may, uh, that's right, because the number of PCR testing is much smaller than other countries. That is partly because we focus on the reduction of the serious cases and death cases. And um, they, conduct, they have conducted the PCR testing when, mainly when the doctor decides it's, it's necessary. But one thing we could say is the number of the cases testing positive has been decreasing while the total number of testing is increasing. So it may be safe to say that 
actual infection is on the downward trend. And third element I would like to mention is the Japanese government issued declaration of state of emergency. This is the first ever time in modern history. And people took it very seriously. The, the real, um, real uh, impact of this declaration is people realize the importance of reducing the people to people contact. That actually is the, the ratio, dramatic so, uh, reduction of the people to people contact. It's less than, I would say, reduced by 70% or in some cases by 80%. So it worked. And fourth element is CT scan. And CT scan worked very well to identify very early stage of pneumonias, which might lead to the very serious condition of the patients. These four elements are something we could provide with other countries. When it seems like here in New York, you know, uh, Governor Cuomo has become a bit of a, a star because his briefings have become must watch TV. And you look at what President Trump is doing with his, you see what, uh, you know, Chief Cabinet Secretary Suga, it's really about communicating effectively and being able to share experiences. And when you think about President Trump and Prime Minister Abe having a phone call to exchange notes on how they can combat COVID-19 together. How do we as individual citizens, you know, you as an ambassador and our president and prime minister and governor, they have a clear role, but what, what's our role as the citizens? In other words, what can we be doing to help in the same way with all the efforts that you are making as a public servant? Um, that's a very important question. I think this difficult times probably the most difficult situation after the World War II. Then, in, in a sense, we are being tested. We means international community, sovereign nation, state, city, or individual, or household. There are certain things they, each of them can do. The fir mm. First of all, try to stay healthy. That is most important. The life is most important. Then mm. we have time to think hard. The answer is not given. Just like a Bob Dylan song, answer is blowing the wind. We are looking for the answer, but each individual have enough time to think hard of it. And that is very, very important. And so saving your own life means a lot to the society, mm. that I think. Yeah, when you talk about the meaning of one life, something that really impacted me hard, and I'm sure you as well, was the, the news recently that Yukio Okamoto had passed away in Japan. Uh, he was a giant among U.S.-Japan uh, relations experts. Um, I, I know that you were close to him. Um, how, how did that news hit you, and what did his life represent? Just one life, but had such a big impact on these two nations that are so close. Actually, Joshua, I, I know him for more than 30 years. When I was a young soldier of U.S.-Japan trade war, he was a director of first North America division. I was assistant director of second North America division. He, he was inspirational to me a lot. And right before coming to New York, I met him. And so I actually, I lost my words. Single, what a big difference a single person can make. He's no Okamoto before him and no Okamoto after him. He's such a huge, huge diplomat. No, that's why even though the numbers in Japan are so low and we're so happy that Japan has not had the same level of deaths that we've had here in New York, even that one life is too much. And when I think about him, he was inspirational to me when I was a young scholar writing my PhD. He had more time for me than anybody else. And I was always very impressed by his insights. He, he was not a typical Japanese bureaucrat. He would always tell you exactly what he thought uh, so when I heard the news, it just, it, it made it very real. And it doesn't matter whether it's one, a hundred or 10,000, every life that has been lost, lost in this COVID is so uh, difficult. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. So the, going back to your question about what we could do in this difficult situation as an individual or the, the, the company. And I think this way, this is very easy to be depressed. This is, it is very easy to get down given this situation. There are so many pessimistic views. It's hard to be optimistic. But this, because of that, we need to stay positive. We should not let ourselves down. 
we should stand tall, we should think hard, we should work hard. And I really think we can be stronger when we work together. So that's the sort of the spirit in the time of crisis for each individual. So I try to be very positive. There's something, you, you recently launched a, a commission and kind of a friendship group between New York and Japan. And uh, you talked about the importance of these two entities coming closer together. And at the time, we were very excited about Japan Day and all these things that we we're looking towards the future. Now, all those things seem to be uh, far away. How do you kind of keep that spirit alive in the current virtual environment when we have to be physically distant? Then actually, New York Zip Center as of today, the number of the infections of the whole world is more than 3.8 million. New York alone, more than 300,000. 9% of the whole infection of the world is in New York. But this city is great, it's strong. Then I think, why New York is so strong? There are certain sort of elements. One is strong political leadership by Governor Cuomo or Mayor de Bragio. People understand that. People are helping each other. People respect each other. That is a source of strong strength of this city. So I'm, I'm sure the city will overcome this most difficult times in modern times. And also, I think, the necessity is mother of success, the means. In this given situation, the so New York now working hard to come up with new idea, new style to survive this situation and provide the joy of lives. So this is great. And in that sense, in this city, US-Japan relations also being tested. I see good signs here and there. As you may, as you know, the, all those major Japanese companies like uh, Toyota, or Honda, or Hitachi, Uniqlo, SoftBank, Canon, Panasonic, those major companies have been helping a lot, providing the ventilators, masks, and face field and face seal and others. And also, not only those companies, but also nonprofit organizations like uh, JAA, Japanese American Associations, or Nippon Club, or some companies like uh, TIC restaurant groups. They've been helping, they've been doing their best to support each other, to pay respect to the essential workers and hospital people. So this is the great testimony of the great friendship in difficult times. They say friend in need is friend indeed. And saying it is easy, but Real action is much more precious than that, and they are showing it. And also you mentioned uh, the New York-Japan Friendship Commission. The inauguration meeting was held 9th of March. We had a lot of fresh ideas, great ideas, initiatives, innovation, but now it's not a good time for us to fulfill it, but we know it, and this, will never last forever. Down the road, we will overcome this situation. Then the time will, time will come for us to fulfill what we discussed in this Friendship Commission. And Joshua, you played a key role in the discussion. And by the way, this commission is chaired by Ambassador Caroline Kennedy. And so I really hope that we'll, we'll, we'll meet again and to do whatever we need to do in a after COVID-19 situation to show and to demonstrate the true friendship between New York and Japan. One of the things I appreciate most about what you just said is many of the companies and the groups you talk about, we've been talking to, uh, we had Sakura Yagi on this program to talk about what she's doing. There's something different about New York and the Japanese consciousness. On, uh, uh, on, your, on your shoulder there, I see John Lennon and I can't think uh, but Yoko Ono and all the uh, kind of the, the Japanese celebrities that live here and contribute onward. So in some ways, the U.S.-Japan relationship is personified by this city and the work that you do and you represent, the work that we at the Japan Society are trying to promote. So I really do believe, and I am 100% uh, with you, that we will demonstrate coming out of this that we are stronger together. And friends don't just sit and say nice words. 
they take action. And so I hope that when we come out of this together, we'll be able to remember that. I, I, I'm curious about uh, the last word you might have in terms of inspiration for, it, for any thoughts you have. Oh, so Joshua, you are such a great host to do, to conduct interviews like this. I have plenty of things to say. And I want to say it's, it's a, two or three, two or three things, other things. But if I may, um, so now people focus on this COVID-19 so much. So there's no news other than COVID-19. But I, this is 2020, and you know, and I know, and people know, this is very special year for New York-Japan relations. Because this is 160 years anniversary of the first encounter of New York and Japan. So this significance should not be overlooked. But I know this is not right time for us to focus on this matter. But yeah, we should not forget this is very special year in a sense. This 160 years friendship. So nothing great cannot be built overnight because we, we were separated one time, but now we are together. And this alliance and the friendship is the one of the greatest in whole history. So, and I really want to conduct something very special to celebrate this 160 years anniversary of it. And Japan Society is a great partner for us. It's your American organization to demonstrate the significance of US-Japan relations, New York-Japan relations, and more than 100 years history. That is amazing. And also, um, I, I, for, 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 for ambassador here, consulate here, uh, what we have to do is to support the Japanese community, especially artists, because those artists from Japan, talented, young, not, may not be well known, but they have enormous potential. They almost lost the opportunity to express themselves, express their performances and art and music. So I, I've been thinking hard how we could help them to express their artistic works. Then I, I do not have the right specific answers yet, but I really hope the consulate and Japan society uh, together work to support those artists. Those art in difficult times will give enormous encouragement and uh, inspiration to the people. So that's something we need to do. We need to figure out how to support them. Absolutely, well, I draw my inspiration from you, the musical talents, the many diplomatic talents you bring. As you know, Japan Society will be doing our gala on June 18th, and we're gonna find a way of connecting. It may not uh, be the way it's always been in the past, but somehow I think we can reimagine a new way that we can connect the people here in New York to the people in Japan that care so deeply and find a way, whether it's through art, through culture, through business or education, to bring us together. Because the beauty of connection, I feel like I'm sitting here right next to you, uh, sharing the energy and I can just feel the energy coming out. So I just wanna thank you on behalf of Japan Society for your leadership. Thank you for, for helping us. You, you are the right leader for this time. We all look to Ambassador Yamanuchi for your guidance. So thank you for your leadership in this time as well. Thank you, if I may, I may I quote very special lyrics from one of my favorite songs. You know, I'm a big lover of American music. So I would like to quote the final part of the lyrics that says, just remember in the winter, far beneath the bitter snows, lies a seed that with sun's love in the spring, becomes the rose. Ambassador Yamanuchi, you always have the best last word. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Come by, Thank cheers you. Come to, by. to be cheers. able to see you again in person. Thank you. See you.